How's it going everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at if New World is worth starting in this day and age, or worth returning to if you're used to play the game. I currently have over 1,700 hours of game time in New World, so now I'll take a step back and evaluate how my journey has been so far and let you know if I think the game is worth it for you or not. Before we get into that, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel, it helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. I'll start off by giving you all an overview of the current state of New World and how we got here before going over what you can expect from the early game, mid game, and end game in New World for PvP and PvE players. And then, finally, I'll go over which players I would recommend this game to and which I would not. As most of us know by now, New World's launch was horrendous. It pretty much set up unbeatable records for how fast the concurrent player base dropped, with the mortality glitches, to money duplications, to insane queue times, and so much more that just made the game not fun to play. It was just a disaster. It wasn't entirely unexpected from a newer development studio, but it still left a sour taste in a lot of players' mouths. This is why there's a really big population of people who will never come back to this game, and no matter how much work the devs put in to improve the game, they will always talk down on it and say it's a dead game. That's not to say the game isn't currently in a bad spot, just that there has been a lot of improvements at the same time. In the last two years alone, we've seen the game improved massively. First, with a free expansion in Brimstone, which added an impressive new zone with tons more to do in game, and the addition of heart runes, which are like special abilities. Then, we had the Legion Wilds drop, with the revamped zone, mounts that came with their own riding skill line, and even artifacts were released, which are powerful items that only a few of can be equipped at a time, that completely change the way you play the game. But with all of these updates, players were let down once again with bugs and delays. A big part of this was due to the engine they used to create New World, and the code behind it. So what did the development team do? They took a step back and rewrote the entire script into a new one that's a lot easier for them to bug fix with, and that has just dropped recently. Again, this dropped with massive bugs though, but they do seem to be finding the root of them and fixing them a lot faster than they were previously, so time will tell if this was the right move or not. But that brings us to now. Since they spent the last few months reworking all the code, the content has been extremely dry, with players having nothing to do, which raised tension amongst the player base. That came to a boiling point when Season 5 got delayed indefinitely. It already had very little new things for players to do, but when the delay got announced, people were fuming. Season 5 has released now, but the players are still not coming back, as the dev team keeps saying we won't be hearing anything about any new content until June. This has a lot of players annoyed, and rightfully so, as getting a roadmap in June is a little late. If we got it in January, the hype alone would have probably been enough to keep the player numbers up until June. Due to hints, we know a few things that are on the roadmap, with swimming and console version of the game almost all but confirmed, which are good things but it wouldn't be enough to satisfy the player base, after all of the hype and anticipation the dev team is putting behind this June announcement. If it's just those two things, I think it will be the final straw for a lot of players. Console release will bring a lot of new players into the game, which is great for Amazon Game Studio, as well as content creators for the game. But if there's no crossplay and console players are all on their own servers, a lot of the current PC players will literally get no benefit from a console release. But now we're in limbo, with player numbers hitting all-time lows, and probably no bumps in those numbers until June. You're probably wondering why I would make a video like this, and that's because there's still an audience out there that I would recommend this game to. Before I go over who the audience is, let's look at what you can expect if you were to start playing New World today. For starters, the early game experience in New World is second to none. You're thrown into the tutorial after a very enticing intro cutscene, and slowly get introduced to a really fun combat experience that very few MMORPGs give you in this day and age. Plus, the visuals and the world of Eternum are stunning. I constantly find myself stopping and just looking at the environment. New World isn't tab target like a lot of MMOs, it has action combat that leads to really high skill based battles that are a lot of fun to be a part of. That's not to say it doesn't have its flaws and can still be improved further, but it's a lot more fun than tab target in my opinion. Then you have the class or skill system. New World allows you to use any weapon you want, and each weapon has their own level which unlocks more skills as you level it up. It's a great system that really encourages trying new builds, as you can go from a heavy tank to a light DPS mage with a few clicks of a button, allowing you to really experiment and find your ideal playstyle without having to make alts. I played for several hundred hours as a melee player, before falling in love with the fire staff and making that my main weapon of choice. And then, there's so many options you can pair it with, a blunderbuss, which is like a massive shotgun, or a rapier, or some kind of magical gauntlets, you can even pair it really well with a great axe since they added the abyss artifact into the game. I also really enjoy how simplified it all is, while still having a high skill cap. You can only slot 3 skills per weapon, with an ultimate ability as well, so you have to master your movement and cooldown times to outsmart your opponents. I much prefer this over some other games where there's 20 skills on your bar and you're running through crazy rotations just spamming buttons. Once you get done with the tutorial, you're kind of sent off to do your own thing in the world, 
but there's a really interesting story quest you can choose to follow that they recently completely redid from the launch version of it that makes the story so much more cinematic and interesting. It really enhances the leveling process when going the main story quest line route, and just by doing all these missions alone and a couple of side quests, you should end up at max level. It's a lot less of a grind than it previously was, especially with mounts being added. Along with your leveling journey as well, you'll constantly be finding yourself sidetracked, leveling all of your skill lines, and you'll be having a blast with it, because it's all just so satisfying and rewarding to do. Whether you're leveling your skinning, logging, mining, fishing, or even your music skill line that was added recently, which is used to get certain bonuses, there's just so much to do. And that's before you even get into the crafting skills, which will have you refining everything you get and turning it into gear that you can use or sell for gold. I will say some of the crafting in Endgame is a bit cluttered and overly complicated, but it looks as if they will rework all of that very soon and make it a lot better. They recently did so with the cooking skill line, and they mentioned other skills will follow behind it shortly. It really has an old school runescape feel when it comes to scaling, which is a game I loved growing up. Eventually, you hit the current level cap of 65, and from there, you'll just be perfecting your build, gearing up, and getting ready for whatever endgame you want to participate in. So this is what I would consider mid-game. You're level 65. Now you're going to want to be gathering materials to max out your heart rune and get all the trophies for your houses to get your buffs, and get the optimal gear for your build. Gearing has become a lot easier, with the new named items having the ability to roll a third skill of your choice. So now you don't have to craft your best in slot items. Instead, you can go hunting a certain mob for an item with two perks you want. Then, choose the third perk for a much cheaper, best in slot piece. Plus, one of your weapons, armor, and jewelry will most likely be an artifact, which most are really easy to get. You'll spend this time grinding out dark matter and chromatic seals, which will be used to max out all of your gear with optimal perks, until you finally have the gear you want. And then, it's just about min-maxing. This requires quite a bit of gold to get to this point, but it can be done relatively quickly, and there's tons of ways to make gold in New World. Once you have all of your gear set up, you can start working on your skill line tools, your bags to be able to carry more and get a couple bonus perks, you can go for crafting and skilling sets to make you more efficient at those skills, or start grinding your PvP track level. There's just so much to do, and this is pretty much where your endgame starts. You got a great set of gear that makes you a formidable opponent. Now, you're just maxing out the final couple of percentages with things like trophies, or you could be going for a second set of gear for if you like to do multiple things in game. All of these sets can be set up in gear slots, which can be toggled in and out of via the use of hotkeys, which is a new thing they also added recently. At the same time, you can also now decide if you want to be mainly PvP or PvE. I think a healthy mix of both is the best way to play and enjoy the game, but to each their own. For the PvP players, there's a good amount of content for you, but if you've been playing for a while, not a lot of that content is new content. There's Outpost Rush, which is like a domination game mode that's a lot of fun and recently had cross server added to it, which makes it easier to get into, even if you're in a low populated server. Veterans of the game kind of have a love-hate relationship with this game mode though, because it hasn't been changed in so long, not even the map, so they're basically playing the same game mode over and over for so long, hoping for something new. A shorter game mode that focuses on smaller scale combat will be 3v3 arenas. This is a lot of fun despite having its rewards nerfed recently and no cross server yet for it, so sometimes finding a game can be a bit of an issue. But essentially, 3 players against another 3 players and the team with the most wins by the end wins the mode. It's simple but fun, and it's great for getting better at PvPing. There's also a newer mode that they added called Races, in which at certain times of the day, for an hour, a zone will be thrown into conflict and all 3 factions will fight over that zone. If you enjoy PvP, you can flag up, find a team, and go fight in these. Be warned though, it's pretty zergy and can get a bit laggy if you don't have the best computer or internet. And then if you really love PvP, you can flag up for PvP at all times when you're doing anything in the open world. So if you're out gathering or questing, and you have your PvP flag on, and you see another opponent who's also flagged up, you can fight it out to the death. These open world fights can be a lot of fun because you'll find yourself fighting in all kinds of crazy areas and scenarios. If you're struggling to find other people flagged up to PvP against, there's also these things called faction control points, which you'll get PvP XP for, for capturing from an enemy faction. So you can head over to these to capture them, or if you see on the map ones being captured, you can head there to fight the people who are capturing it. Then, there's the wars. For those of you who are top tier PvPers, each zone will be owned by companies in the game, and will be fought over in a kind of castle siege game mode. Whoever wins, gets the territory, and an insane amount of gold along with it. Because of this, there are massive hardcore companies built around territory control, and to get into these wars requires you to be very well geared and very good at the game. There is still a chance you can be randomly slotted for a war every once in a while when companies don't have enough members, but usually you'll just end up on the side that's getting steamrolled. Wars can be a lot of fun and very intense, but it's hard to get into one, so a lot of you probably won't be seeing much of this content. The whole time you're doing all these activities, you'll be getting PvP XP which will increase your PvP rank, 
allowing you to unlock cool rewards at each tier, including armors, emotes, artifacts, special housing items, and much, much more. The higher you get, the better your rewards become, so it's really worth doing. Now, for a newer player, that might sound like a decent amount of endgame PvP content, and you'd be right, but at the same time, the veterans who only PvP in New World have a real issue with the PvP content in the game so far. A lot of these game modes came out long ago, and I haven't been touched much since, so these PvP players have been playing the same game modes over and over for years, at the same time seeing more and more PvE content added to the game, with the PvP side being neglected. As a person who enjoys both aspects of the game, I do still see why the PvP players are annoyed, and agree more love needs to be shown their way. It does seem as if the dev team has heard them though, as in a recent Q&A video they put out, they mentioned it's going to be a massive year for PvP in New World, and from data mining, it looks as if a PvP only island is going to be coming to New World very soon. Hopefully they deliver on their promise, and the PvP players get shown the love they deserve in the coming years. But what if you were more into the PvE side of the game? Then there's still loads of options for you, aside from going the completionist route, getting all of the achievements, maxing all the skill lines and weapons, and unlocking all the transmog in the game, the main thing PvE players are doing is mutated expeditions, which are endgame dungeons on a higher difficulty level, with the mobs within them getting crazy buffs to make them difficult for you to complete. Every week, three different mutations are mutated out of the current 12 expeditions. Players will be grinding these for the items they drop, and also to set new completion records. Recently, a new group finder has been added into the game for expeditions, which makes life a lot easier for the people who enjoy running these. There's also season-long leaderboards for these expeditions, along with the PvP content, that if you rank high enough on by the end of the season, can see you getting some prestigious armor, which a lot of people strive for. Along with this, there will also be endgame trials, like the Winter Rune Forge or the Hatchery, and even elite trials, like the Sandworm, which will require you to work with a larger team to take down these challenging bosses for big rewards. But there's just infinite things you can do as a PvE end gamer. Whether you want to be a fishing main and just fish all day making your gold that way, or you can play the in-game market trying to get to the gold cap. There's also a really cool housing system in the game with tons of unique furniture, and you can own 3 houses per character, so I like to manipulate furniture to make crazy houses in the game. My most recent house, I used cabinets to make a wooden roof patio for my house and built a little showroom up there. I'm also currently working on getting unique transmog looks for all of my gathering skill gear sets. Some people will just throw on some podcasts and go around chopping down trees. Others are all about the transmog. Hell, some people even like to just sit in global chat all day talking about politics and religion and consider that endgame. It's really whatever you make of it. But that brings us to if I would recommend this game or not, after spending almost 2000 hours in it. And it's pretty much a yes for most people, but for others, no. Let me explain a bit further. If you've never played this game before, I highly recommend this game. You'll have tons of content to run through, and by the time you're getting through it all, new content should be getting announced and released. I also like to wait for a sale, so I would recommend that, but even at full price, I think it's massively worth it, especially since there's no sub feed for the game, and the cash shop is very fair, with pretty much no pay to win. If you do end up enjoying this game, the Elysian Wilds expansion is pretty much a necessity because it allows you to get to level 65, get artifacts, and even your mount, which is pretty vital. We can always test the game out and see if you enjoy it before getting this. Again, sales happen often, so you could wait for the expansion to go on sale. If you're a player who has the game, but quit shortly after launch, 100% you should come give it a second go. There's been so much improvement since then, and I think you'll enjoy the game a lot more now. You will eventually need to buy the expansion if you enjoy the game, but jump in, see if you like it, and then maybe when the expansion goes on sale, grab it for cheap and finish off your character. If you're a player who's sunk many hours into New World, and have quit recently to Season 5, Unfortunately, I'd have to say, maybe extend your break a bit further until at least June, see what the roadmap looks like, and when the next big update is coming, and decide when to come back based on that information. If you quit ages ago though, before the Brimstone Sands expansion, then 100% you should come back and check out all the new fun stuff Brimstone has to offer, and the Elysian Wilds as well. If you missed the Elysian Wilds, I'd say it's worth coming back to check out, but only if it's on sale. Overall, New World is a game I love, and have sunk in so many hours into. It's been a bumpy road getting here. But I think the game is in a decent state, despite the player numbers. The game still has immense potential, but I think this year will be crucial on whether or not it ever lives up to that potential. We'll have to wait until June though, and then see if they can deliver on what they promise, before we make our final conclusions. No doubt, we'll have the people memeing in the comments saying dead game, but that's just part of the New World community. It's a real love-hate relationship with the game. But overall, I think for sure New World is worth your time, especially if you can grab it when it's on sale. Thanks for watching another video. And a massive shout out to all the channel patrons. If you'd like to follow me on a lore journey through my main story quest in New World and see the story I was telling you about, click on the video to the left. Or if you'd like to see how I made the rooftop house I mentioned in this video, click on the video to the right.